Let's add some polish to this bow and arrow. Hopping it back into the project, you can see I still have the bow and arrow from before. I also have these three targets that I made, and they just have a rigid body on them, but nothing too important there. And with the bow and arrow, I want to add some polish. I'm not gonna get too crazy and do absolutely everything I can to polish up this bow and arrow interaction, but I wanna add some sound, some haptic feedback, maybe a few particle effects on the arrow. So to start things off, I think I'm gonna add a release sound to our string when we let go of the bow. To do that, I'm just gonna add a component. I'm gonna do audio source. And with the audio source, you'll see here, we do need a sound clip. And you know what? All I did was go to freesound.org and I looked up bow and arrow. And there's plenty to pick from. You just grab one of these and it should work just fine. Coming back to the project, you can see I've already imported it here. So I'm gonna drag and drop that there. And then you wanna make sure that you are putting this as 3D spatial blends. <laughs> Another thing, I hate that this is the default. You wanna make sure play on awake is turned off. I don't I don't know why Unity does that. Like, honestly, guys, we don't want the sounds to play on awake. Turn that off by default. But all right, so now that we have this set up, we just need to play it when we release, which we have to do through our script. So if we open up the pool interaction script, we're gonna have a few different things in here now. You can see the new code, I've added a comment above it that says polish. So it just kind of separates it from what I did in the previous videos. Right here, you can see we have the audio source, then we just grab it in the awake method. Coming down here, when we release the string, then we want to play the release sound. So we call that method. And down here, all that method does is just press play. And that's really it. Next, I want to add haptic feedback. So when we're pulling the string back, I want us to feel a vibration as if the strength or it's getting a little more strenuous the further back we're pulling it. Now, luckily this code already kind of gives us a place to kick things off with that. And that is with the calculate pull. Now, if you remember, this is going to take where our controller is pulling backwards and determine how much strength it is based on the start and end position of how far back we want to allow the player to pull the string. And you'll see here that I've added a call within our process interactable. Remember, this is where we're updating the string. So this is where we want to update the haptic feedback. And so I've added a method in here or a method call. And if we come down here, we can go over the method. And the first thing I want to do is just make sure the pulling interactor is not null. So that is the thing that is currently grabbing the string. And that is designated as a IXR interactor. And what we need to have is access to our action control based controller. I, I probably said that wrong. Give me a sec. Let's see here. All right, XR controller action based or action based controller. There we go. So we want the action based controller. This is what will allow us to control the haptic feedback. So what we're going to do in the code here is we're going to take the IXR interactor, which is going to symbolize either the right or left controller, whichever one's grabbing the string at the time. And we need to buy grab the action based controller from that. And so we do that here in this haptic feedback. And as you can see, I just make sure it's not null. And then I come in here, I go to the transform the game object and then finally I can get the component from the game object action based controller. And then I send a haptic impulse of the pull amount and for a duration of 0.1 seconds. And that's it. So the further back we pull, this pull amount's gonna increase because that's correlating with this calculated pull here. And eventually it's gonna reach maximum, so it'll feel very, very vibrate as opposed to just like a mild vibration at the beginning of the pull. Starting it up, uh, you can't really see the vibration of the controllers, but that is working. And then also when I release, it plays a sound. So there. It is working. Let's doctor up this arrow. So if I go into prefabs and open up the prefab here for the arrow, I can add a particle, ugh, particle system. There we go. Now, as far as the particle system goes, that is a whole video on its own. I am gonna enter some values here and kind of explain things, but not go into too much depth. And you can already see this is just firing the wrong way. I, I just want like a few sparks off the tail end of this. So first, I'm just going to move this back a bit. Next up, I don't want the particles to last too long. So I'm going to try 0.2 seconds. And you can see they die off pretty quickly there. I also want to see the start speed to have a bit of variability to it. So I'm going to pick two different constants. I'm going to go with a 0.1 and a 0.3. So it's gonna pick a random number between those two. And it's still too big. And also it's still shooting off this way. I want it to go in reverse. So I'm gonna try switching this to negative. All right, there we go. And you can see it's kind of firing off backwards now. 
Uh, as I said, the start size is way too big, so I'm going to also pick two constants again. It's always nice to have random variability when you're playing with your particle effects. It makes it a little more interesting. And particles can be between 0 and maybe 0.5. And that cone is way too big, which, you know, I'll change this and make it more consolidated around the tail in a second. Actually, you know what? That's really, really bugging me. I'm going to try to reduce that now. So I'm going to come into shape. And what I really need to do here, I think I need to reduce the radius. Yeah, it's a bit much. Let's see. Let's make it really small. I'm going to do point, point zero 0.05. There we go. So you can see that's a lot tinier, but that... The fuzzies are still big there. Yeah, that 0.5 is just a bit too much up here with the start size. So I'm going to reduce that to 0 0.05. So yeah, that's about what I want. Just little tiny sparks flying off this thing. So now that that is about the right size that I want, you know, another thing that I like to add is kind of losing its color over time. I like to reduce the gradient over time. So it just kind of becomes a little more. Let's see. I'm going to move this up a bit. So as you see, it kind of fades away at the very tail end. And I kind of want to do that for the size as well. So I'm going to switch this instead of it increasing in size over time. I'm going to I'm going to have it decrease. There we go. And when you're playing with this, I mean, feel free to play with all these different variables I'm adjusting and kind of get it to what you like or get a feel for the particle system. Sadly, I, I need to do a whole video just on the particle system itself. It's just there's so much to cover and I do not want this to be an hour long video. Not yet. Now, the last thing I want to add here is a new material. This white trail's OK, but you know, I'm going to make it a little shrimpy. I'm going to add some pink. And the material I'm going to use for this, I actually have a new one that I've added to the project. So if you don't see this when you've downloaded it, just re-download the project should be added in after the posting of this video. And I'm going to drag that into here. And yeah, you can see my little pink trails. Now to make this a little more dramatic, I also want to add a trail renderer to this whole thing. So I'm going to go add component trail renderer. And I've already experimented with this one and know what I need to add here. I'm going to put this at 0 0.05 and then I'm going to have this decrease over time. So to do that, I'm just going to double click here to add a new point and drag this down. And just don't forget to point, put this at 0 0.05 or something close to that. Otherwise, you're going to have a pretty fat tail. I also don't want this tail lasting forever, so I'm I'm gonna reduce this down to uh, 0.3. Very, very short amount of period of time while it's in the air, otherwise you're just gonna have this massive tail behind it. This tail right now is just gonna be a uh, ugly white tail. I'm just gonna come in here and add the arrow trail material to this as well, so they'll have matching colors. And we have these here, so let's use them. And I'm going to do that in the arrow script and go over what I've added. To kick things off, of course, we're going to have two private variables. And you can see here I've marked it with polish like I did in the previous script. And we're just going to store the particle system in the trail renderer. In the awake method, we just grab those components and then we got a column. So when we are calling this is primarily when the bow is active. And we're going to be calling these particle effects when the bow is being or the arrow is being released. And then also in the stop function, we want to make sure, you know, if the arrow is either notched or when it is landed or hit something, it is no longer playing. We don't want these particles and trails flying everywhere while the arrow is stuck into something. It would just look weird. So if we come down here, you can see in the stop function and or method, I have added particle stop and then also trail renderer emitting to false. And then you can also see that when we come over here to release underneath the polish again, that we just press play on the particle system and the trail renderer is set to emitting. So if we go into play mode and try it out you can see i can shoot the bow and it is shooting some particle effects and a trail with the arrow and it's just a little more polish i decided to do this part three to show what you might want to add to your interactable objects to add a little more flair to them you know the list for this can go on we could add things like you know a sound for pulling the string back and forth or you know a sound for when the arrow hits an object but in all honesty, the new longtime support Unity engine's out, and I want to dive into that, explain it, and see what it has to offer us VR developers. So I'm going to run off and get working on those videos. A big shout out, as always, to my Patreon members. Without you, I cannot do this. So thank you again, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.